In the previous video, we've learned the biggest challenges of development and testing teams, and also how using various Jira features can help with managing requirements and tests. Let's start from the first step in the development process, which is gathering and analyzing requirements. Successful software development actually starts long before the team starts coding. As we've already seen, requirements are the first point where potential bugs start crawling into the product. By managing them properly, your company can save a lot of time and money as the cost of fixing defects grows along with the work in progress. The requirements need to be defined by the customers and the product owner who acts on their behalf. If we can involve business analysts, we should make the most of it as well. Based on the data they all collected from different sources, like surveys, talks, web analytics and so on, we can bring out the ideas which equally meet the customer's needs and technical possibilities. At this stage, we also estimate the possible risks and user scenarios. Then the testers should come in to carefully check the specification in order to spot possible inaccuracies, duplicates or inconsistencies. Designing test specifications with complete awareness of the expectations and capabilities of the software prevents many possible bugs. Only after doing this, we can confirm that the team has the right tools to code the features. Many teams use simple spreadsheets or text files for storing project requirements, but it's not the best solution when a lot of people are involved in working with them. Such files require manual updating and informing all the team members about the modifications every time, just like paper documents. At Jira Day 2018, Tarun Sapra, the Atlassian expert who has been working for companies like eBay, told why they gave up on doing it. You had the documentation on document files, that is MS Doc files, and that was all over the network drive. So after, let's say, six months down the line in the project, nobody knew where the document file is. And that was one of the biggest problems because uh, you cannot search the whole network drive for finding few files of your project. And that is something which I have faced myself, not one time, but many times. Modern project management systems like Atlassian Jira allow storing requirements in a transparent way so that everyone has access to the latest version and is automatically notified upon changes. What's more, tight integration between requirements and other objects allows better tracking of their coverage and enables advanced reporting. The managers can check at a glance which features of the product fulfill a given requirement and if it has been tested before the release. Being fully extendable with other Atlassian software or dedicated apps, Jira software may help you execute the full software development lifecycle inside a single toolset. With this approach, the requirements can be linked directly to the features and test cases. This will let your team members view the requirements from the issues related to them and thus maintain a good understanding of the project goals. Let's see how Jira can tackle this challenge for your team. We distinguish three different ways of gathering requirements in the Atlassian suite. If you already use Jira on your project, storing the requirements as issues is a logical step. We have two options for how to do it right. We can set up a dedicated software project and use it as the requirements repository or we can stay in the development project, but then we should set up at least one custom issue type for requirements. Otherwise, the developers won't be able to distinguish stories which are requirements from the ones that are their own tasks. This will also impact their sprint scopes, burndown charts and other ways to measure their work effectiveness. Either way it would require some manual work by the Jira admin. Creating an issue type from scratch implies designing a workflow, adding some custom fields and configuring screens. Setting up a project requires some time, as well as adds to the Jira database and your stories can be customized this way. That will influence the whole scheme, which applies to other projects as well. Another drawback is that this way you cannot see a requirement in an easy way once it is marked as done. The second way to manage requirements is by adding Confluence, which is an Atlassian Enterprise Wiki. Its main purpose is optimizing the work with documentation, so its pages can store and present much more detailed information than Jira issues custom fields. Here again, your team gains a couple of options for organizing requirements on Confluence pages. You can build the whole requirement structure in Jira and write down the details of particular ones on the appropriate Confluence pages. You can put the entire specification into one document or create a tree structure of subpages and connect them to a Jira project. Confluence provides its users with a blueprint template, which makes describing the details and standardizing the layout easier. You get seamless integration of your requirements pages with Jira issues as well. 
we can insert Jira issue filter macros on each requirement page or right into the table cells, which can get you to the related Jira issue and back in just one click. The most advanced and probably the easiest way to bring requirements management into Jira is using dedicated apps from the Atlassian Marketplace. Requirements and test management for Jira is one of them, and it allows planning and executing software tests as well, thus completing the software projects that we have in Jira out of the box. The app provides its users with four dedicated issue types or different types of requirements, a tree structure view to put them together, and a couple of custom link types, which along with a transparent relations view ensure top traceability from end to end. Let's take a quick look at how this thing works. The process of creating requirements in the RTM app is the same as for any other Jira issues. We have four types of requirements preset in the app – functional, non-functional, business and user interface. We should define each requirement with proper labels and components. This allows organizing the requirements along with features and test cases and then displaying them together on the issue navigator or dashboard gadgets using JQL filters. Also, we can add an SINE responsible for analyzing or fulfilling the given requirements. If the requirements aren't organized right from the start, it may lead to project delays, misunderstandings between the team members and finally waste of time and money. Putting them into a transparent folder structure speeds up defining priorities, assigning tasks to team members and executing them. You can create folders for different requirement types, features, components, priorities and so on. The nesting is unlimited, so you can have as many levels as you need. Everything is drag and droppable here, so we can easily apply changes to the structure. H3 view also features a flex search bar, which allows us to easily find an object or a group of objects we are looking for. We only need to name them carefully, so we always know what to type in. Just like any other Jira issue, requirements can have a workflow assigned to them. The most simple one can contain just two statuses, and you can create more sophisticated ones if you need to. With the simple option, you can mark requirements as done in Jira when they are fully realized inside your product. If analysts are involved in working with requirements, they would be happy to have a more complex workflow and use Agile boards to track their tasks. If you leverage Jira for the whole project, you can track every stage of the process and verify if all your requirements are safely covered with related epics, stories and test cases. While collecting requirements, designing features and describing user stories, it's easy to miss something, especially in case of a big project. Searching for the initial mistakes which caused the actual defects can be a really tough nut to crack after the final release. It's not a problem though, if your team can see consistent, well-described and clearly visible links between the pieces of work. You can see them on the Relations tab of any object inside the app. What's more, the app features traceability and coverage reports, which are two other ways to visualize these relations and present them to the stakeholders. We'll go through them in more detail later on in this tutorial series. Now we can see that storing requirements in Jira is surely more intuitive and efficient than gathering them in external tools or Excel sheets. This way everyone can keep on track and follow the changes, which contributes to a big improvement for your project. If you decide on using the requirements and test management tool embedded into Jira, your range of opportunities gets even wider. Marketplace apps like RTM for Jira can help establish efficient, well-organized workflow and prevent possible bugs in the final product. With this app, it's possible to structure and group requirements into transparent folders and subfolders, making them perfectly clear for everyone involved in the process. When we're done, the team at last can start coding. And what happens after the code's ready? Let's find out in the next video.